Before we get started tonight, ladies and gentlemen, on an episode here, Fast Break on IE Sports Network. I want to talk to y'all about the last eight years for the net for the uh, for the network. For the last eight years, IE Sports Radio has been bringing you amazing content, ranging from interviewing legendary athletes to building tailor man shows dedicated to all major sports cities around the country. All the while, we've been continuing to be by the fans for the fans. With your help, we're ready to take the next step. When you go to our website, iSportsRadio.com, you'll see our Patreon link with five different tiers. The first one starting at just five dollars a month. This donation gets you shout outs on all 32 of our shows. Higher tiers include IE Sports Radio merchandise, access to our podcast and university, and even a chance to be featured on segments, flagship show, the defining moment. Thank you very much for contributing. Continue to make IE Sports Radio your three for that as all sports. We have four Patreon members, Bay Rays, Marcus, Los, Great, Key to the Gate, and Anonymous. Thank you for making eight years our FA University special. Here's more than many more years to come. Now on to the show. What up, everybody? In tonight's episode, broadcast, what do you want to call it? We talk about Kyrie's return to the court after he completed all his, you know, his tasks like a Final Fantasy game. Back tonight against the uh, Memphis Grizzlies, we'll discuss his performance and what it means for the Nets for the down the road. Plus, Giannis and Montez Hero, they got into it. After the game, after Philly beat the Bucks, is it big deal, small deal, or if Giannis going to make a big revenge game out of it? Plus, we'll go over scores and news around the league. This is Fast Break here on, live on I Sports Radio. Your direct feed that is all in sports, and you're welcome to join us. And join us as you shout out tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Lots to talk about, lots to get into here tonight. I hope y'all are doing very well. We got Thanksgiving coming up here in a couple of days. College football is winding down. You know, here in my town, a Bucky's is opening up here tomorrow. So if y'all don't know what Bucky's is, think about it like a mix, like a like a it's like a Texas thing, like, you know, like a Cracker Barrel gas station, if you want to call that. But anyways, D-Log, how you doing out tonight, sir? I'm doing pretty well, man. Uh, I had you on my budget. My budget was one of them big gas Man, <laughs> I say. Hey, man, I say this like, hey, Vanny, you know they doing their thing right now. Uh, you know, one of those hard jobs, that, you know, to coach at, but you know, they doing their thing. But D Lock, it's about three weeks in a row. We we, we talking about. Kyrie Irving, three weeks in a row that we lean off of Kyrie Irving. Feel like deja vu. Uh, let's see, uh, D Lock. I think the th- uh, the people can't hear you at the moment. They I, cannot hear me. Yeah, they can't hear you. They say that you're uh, real quiet. Okay, I'm gonna get some new headphones. Then uh, I was definitely talking about the band beating. Like, is that fast with that? Let's see. 
you might be able to hear me much better now. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. We, I think we hear you loud and good. Okay. All right, making sure. I think it's my headphones and that. I got to get some new ones. But we're leading off for Kyrie again. Yes, I know. I know. I know. I know. Kyrie. The, the storm still comes. D Lock, he comes back tonight. I guess a good Memphis team. Who is going to be without Ja Morant for a long period of time? Jerry Jackson, who's recently come back into the lineup, but he's going to be out tonight. But still, Memphis is, is a still still good team. Regardless of the star players are gone, we've seen last year that they're going to run some good win streaks with their, their star players gone. What do you look for for Kyrie to do tonight to kind of ease, it, ease himself back into the lineup, you know, make ways, try and get this team back on track to make a um, to make a run in the playoff spot. What do you expect out of Kyrie tonight in your eyes? Well, I definitely, I definitely expect him to bring uh, some more shooting. That's what they actually been missing these past uh, couple games without him. Um, hell, first of all, dude, I believe Claxton is out tonight. Yep. So you're going to see more of Ben Simmons, which we have seen a lot more of him right now so far. Uh, they've been leaning on Kevin Durant a lot. And right now he's 3 for 8, uh, 6.3 assists on the board. Um, Seth Curry is who has been in and out. He's starting to get his feet back under him. Uh, he is actually – getting some minutes more now. Um, another person that we've seen over time when Kyrie was out was Cam Thomas. Mm -hmm. uh, who we seen, who we remember, you remember we were talking about him live during the draft, Brooklyn getting him, and we just thought this guy was going to make it hell of a lot easier for both KD and uh, Kyrie. Uh, but with him being out, they got him a lot more minutes. Joe Harris seems healthy now. He's getting more shots up. But I think that Kyrie's going to bring, you know, his energy and that leadership is what they what they have been missing. Um, we see a lot of Edmund Sumner also uh, with Kyrie being out, who he played exceptionally well. Um, and they played a couple tight games uh, without him. I think the last game that they played tight was against Portland. So uh, they're in a tight one right now. Uh, and one person that has been a great signing for them has been Royce O'Neal. I mean, if you look at the energy that he's been bringing throughout the season, starting at the small four position, he's been doing a hell of a lot for them. And we thought it was going to be more so defense, but hell, he's been doing a lot on the offensive side. He's also doing the same thing tonight. Talk about four for five for three. Um, three fours and two assists, I believe. So uh, he's already on his way to having one of those continuous seasons and, and, and great games. So for those that you, of you that play draft teams and fan duel, he is at a, I'm pretty sure, an acceptable, acceptable price, <laughs> squeezing all your other big plays. So, but Kyrie, you know, like I said, right now, it looks like he's got about 13 minutes. So, I see this game as a getting back into the rhythm game. Um, right now, also, while we're talking about Kyrie, you remember they were talking about, I think many have seen, uh, Brooklyn having questions about Ben Simmons, you know, commitment and how he, how much passion he has. Well, ever since then, he's been playing exceptionally well also. Yeah. Um, and I'm not just saying on the offensive side, but also on the defensive side. Right now, tonight, six for eight, three boards. So, two assists. We know he's doing the thing on the defensive side. So, the biggest thing that I want, I want Kyrie to bring now moving forward is that leadership. Now, obviously, when this game's in, this game ends, there's going to be a hell of a lot more questions regarding his past situation. Um, now, hopefully, when they ask him about his tweets and what he retweeted, they also need to talk about him sending a donation to a family, helping them find or have information on their on their their family member uh, disappearing on a vacation trip. So, um, I think that needs to be something that needs to be mentioned as well. But, you know, on the court. I want to see, and I expect him to bring that leadership, which is what I think he has been known for being in Brooklyn because obviously we know Katie does not want to be that person that is leading. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. Uh, what D-Lock uh, D was alluding to, Jay, ladies and gentlemen, 
uh, Kyrie uh, has uh, donated to a couple causes, and I like the causes that you know that was outlined that he had to come back and do, which I hope he didn't do. But he donated to this uh, to the family of a young lady named Shanquilia Robinson, and y'all go look up that situation. And it would kind of just really just blow your mind. You know, how, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Grimy. Your close friends or your friends are, can be. So, y'all just look up that situation. You know, he don't, don't need 65,000 uh, to the family. And part, you know, just to help out, you know, funeral costs, legal legal stuff. Because I think that situation going to be a whole mess. But that's, you know, a little off topic. But. You know, look at right now. They're playing the, the Grizzlies right now. It's halftime. Memphis is up by five, which is not really surprising, given how you know deep this team team is. Dylan Brooks is, you know, has seventeen points. Uh, Stephen has a, Stephen Adams has twelve. Uh, Tyus Jones, who's uh, at, taking on pro guard duties for John Morant, has eight points and four assists. So not really surprising that Memphis is up right now. You know, looking at every time for uh, the Nets right now, D-Lock. Ben Simmons has 12 points, 6 for 8 from the field. Kyrie just had 5 and 3 rebounds. You know, uh, Royce O'Neal, like you mentioned, 12 points, 4 for 5 for 3-point land. And, you know, with Kyrie back, you know, Cam Thomas, you know, got on shows 2 minutes so far. But Seth Curry's getting that, lot, that playing time. I think for me... How I look at Kyrie coming back? They get they just gotta find a groove, you know. They just gotta find a groove to kind of get things going because they really haven't got things going at all. And hopefully, Jock Vaughn can figure that out, you know, with this group. I think one thing, like you mentioned, Cam Thomas, he's gotta be a factor in rotation. You know, Patty Mills is nice. Seth Curry is nice. But I think Cam Thomas is your future. And if you can, like, lessen Patty Mills' role and give that more time to Cam Thomas and give him more growth to kind of show what he, he can produce for this team, I think it would go a long way for this squad. And interestingly enough, though, Sheldon Sharp, the other first-round pick in that same draft, Hasn't got any minutes. Even in the road trip, they went out west. It's like, even when Nicholas Coxon went out against the Laker game, I was watching that game, D-Log. It's like, and I tweeted from our, our Twitter account at Fastbreaker ISR. I said, why why is Sheldon Sharp not getting in the game if, if you, you're missing a big man? And the reason I say that, you know, Anthony Davis just went to work down low. You know, I mean, yeah, I like Ross O'Neal's toughness, but, you know, he's six six. You know? Kevin Durant, I mean, he gonna, he, he'll he guard you, but he ain't going to, like, go try to foul out because the team needs him. Correct. Oh, yep, that's true. So I'm just wondering, like, why you don't play the other, the other kid more? You draft in the first round, you got you got to see what you get in your investment. You know? Ben Simmons didn't play in that game, so I just, just I that you didn't play him in that uh more in that you know, especially in that road trip. Especially here too. Uh Marcus, uh oh, shout out to the chat. I love y'all. I great I we greatly appreciate y'all hopping on tonight. Hope y'all doing well. I know like Mike Pat, you know, Adam Karnick. I know y'all up north. And I know this. The, well, I don't know. I don't know. Did, did Chicago get hit, Adam? I, I don't know. I I know Buffalo in that area got hit, but I don't know if Chicago got hit or not. But hopefully, y'all staying warm and nice up there, uh, around you know, upper Midwest and the east and uh, on the east coast. Uh, shout out to Terry Rodriguez. How you doing tonight, sir? Shout out to Marcus Los. Great. I know. I'm disappointed that. You know, Bud Crawford 
And um, God, what's up, guys? Now I'm on the tip of my tongue. And Earl Spence didn't happen. Uh, I, I sucks that happened. Well, didn't happen as well. But. Mark is saying, D Lock, that uh, you don't like Patty as a six man. <sighs> I think we kind of we we seen the the Patty Mills story. If that makes sense, D Lock. Yes. I, um. Okay, go ahead. I, I was I, I was gonna say like we, like we see. I mean, we we kind of see what he we what he's done. Like. Okay, you can come in, you can get good solid minutes, but everything else you don't really do well. What, what you think about that? It's like, hey, like you mentioned, me, you kind of like on a Cam Thomas boat, like play the kid more. Yeah, that's my thing. Um, right now I'm, I'm I understand what Patty Mills uh, can provide, but this is not the younger Patty Mills. And also, this is a Patty Mills on a loaded Brooklyn team uh, with the Cam Thomas. Uh, actually, we seen what Edmund Sumner looked like even when he started. Seth Curry, you got all these guys. Um, but I want remember what we seen when, when when they drafted Cam Thomas. I mean, go look at his his high school numbers. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sorry, not high school, college numbers at LSU. Like this guy was making some shots, you know, taking a lot of shots and and, and, and getting the fall. So I thought he was going to be that guy coming off the bench, giving a KD or Kyrie um, that break. Uh, so I feel like, you know, you draft this guy. Um, you have all these other guys that can provide, you know. But this is your, like you said, this is the future that you have. This is the guy that you're going to lean on um, moving down, you know, down the season, down for years to come, even when the KD and the Kyrie is gone. So uh, for me, Patty Mills only has but so many years left. Uh, this is not the San Antonio Spurs Patty Mills. So, uh, for me, you know, I like Patty. I think he's he's a, he's a very good player. He showed that. And he showed that even in international. But uh, now, I think you gotta, we have to see more of Cam Thomas. And it's sad to think that the only time we actually seen Cam Thomas is when Kyrie suspended. So, uh, maybe if you do get him more involved, uh, the range of them having to rely on others to shoot so much wouldn't be that it wouldn't that wouldn't happen as much because for me again like I said I said this when when Brooklyn acquired Ben Simmons this guy's not a great shooter and don't expect him to be that that's not Ben Simmons he's more so a defender and a slasher that's what he's gonna be so to get him at, for them to get a Ben Simmons and think that he's gonna be this great shooter shooting 50 to 60 or 70 percent from three point land or whatever, Brooklyn would be fooling themselves to think that. So you have him for what he can provide, and also um, now you surround him with players that can help. If you look at Ben Simmons, right, we look at his stat sheet for the most time. He shoots terrible. He's shooting terrible, but he has a lot of boards and assists. But if you play, he's like an all around player, right? Yes, the sir. He's getting boards, he's getting blocks, he's getting steals. Is getting assists that may score ten points on a on a great day for him, maybe twelve, hell even fifteen. That's a great day for him. So, I w- I wouldn't expect for him to go on a consistent twenty five plus points per game. That's not going to happen. So if you want to use him as a piece that you're building around, you have a shooter that you can add with him. And I believe that's Cam Thomas. So um, now Patty Mills would be that person that can be that leader. You know that can continue to teach them the way, but um, I think that Patty Cam Thomas needs to get more run, so we can see where he fits with this offense and his team moving forward. Yeah, we'll I'll, we'll I will leave off with this. It's like Patty Mills is nice, but I just like you know see what the kid does and see what if he could be your future because. If things don't go right for the season, you gotta see what the, your young guys can do for you down the road. If you want to build it now, take, tr- you know, let Kyrie lock uh, walk in free agency, uh, trade Kevin Durant for assets for the future, maybe offload Ben Simmons somewhere. Then you gotta see what guys like Sharp and Thomas can do. 
and you know, he got a nice find in, um, in Watabi at that, you know, that fourth, that fourth spot, you know, the three and the fourth spot. So, you know, you got to just find out what the young kids got. That's, that's all I, I think we're saying here. Because look, look who Memphis got on the other side. They win it by five, and they, I mean, at halftime, and they got deaf. Even without the two franchise players, you know, not playing tonight. They're up by five, and they got deaf. Great drafting after they got the two draft, uh, big guy, uh, big stars in Morant and Jackson. And they got great depth behind them. So, well, I mean, we'll see. We'll keep an eye on this game uh, going forward on the, uh, on, the uh, on the show. But D-Lock, with the Kyrie stuff kind of like dying down and stuff like that, well, hopefully it dies down. Uh, another little incident happened. Giannis, Montrez Harrell. Now, y'all did not see this on the interwebs, you know, the other night, on Friday night. The 76ers defeat the Milwaukee Bucks 110 or 102. Big win for the Sixers because they don't have uh, James Harden and Tyreek Maxey for weeks on end. Well, take it back. Maxey got hurt in that game. Sorry. Excuse me. I got to hit myself. But they won a game. Giannis didn't have a great performance at the line. So as the determined individual that Giannis is, wanted to shoot free throws after the game. Now, there's like different stories that has come out about this. At first, the one video we, I think a lot of people saw that Giannis was shooting free throws and then the people were putting the ladder up. You figured the workers trying to get their stuff done and get out and all that stuff. But, as we can further tell and other stories coming out, that the workers just put the ladder there in front of the hoop because, you know, Philly's going Philly. And then D Lock, as me and you, you know, text each other. Montrez Hero. I don't know if he's known tough guy and whatever. I don't know how he's presenting around the league, but he told Giannis, you know, to get the hell off my court. Basically. D Lock, we can make it this whole situation with Giannis trying to just shoot free throws and Hero. Kicking him, trying to kick him out, and then Harold talking to the brothers that I kick y'all's ass next time I see y'all, something like that. What y'all think? What do you think about this whole situation between, you know, those those guys there? <laughs> well, for me, uh, let's talk about the first thing. Y'all has played terrible when it came to free throws this past this past game against Philly. Yep. I mean, I'm looking at this game, game, and this dude is literally missing. I mean, he's missing the rim at the free throw line. Like, it just looked terrible. Like, and it just seems like all this time, I don't know, man. I'm not an NBA ball player. <laughs> Never will be. But, hell, at this point, I'm thinking that for you to be, what is he, 6'11", 6'10"? Some say 7 foot. Damn tall. Yeah, for you to be that damn tall. Ain't no way you should be missing the actual rim at the free throw line. That's just my opinion. Um, so, boom, that happened. I'm thinking that, okay, you know what? Giannis understands you know, that he's trying to get better at what he's, he, you know, he's feeling that. He needs that work. They have, that was Friday. Their next game is Monday. So, um, they're going to go home, X, Y, and Z. Um, understand that want to be great, but uh, also seeing um, Montrez part as well. But Montrez has been known as that kind of player, right? Um, he's just not gonna let anybody just do anything. Uh, I don't know if they had any prior issue in the past, but yeah, I believe Trez said he was trying to get a workout in. 
<laughs> yeah. Apparently, yeah. So if he's trying to get a workout in and you in the way, I mean, you're at on, on his home court. So he said, man, get the hell off my court. You know, you shoot your free throw. He grabs the ball and then he, you know, takes it away. Then not only that, he takes the ball and takes it on the other side of the court, gets some shots in. So now he's challenging, you know, you, you know, trying to see if you want to get the ball, get your workout in, whatever the case may be. So I'm thinking this is just some extra energy between the two. I'm not respecting the fact that Giannis wants to work on something that he's struggling with. Um, it just seems as if there has to be something that has not been talked about between these two guys. Uh, because clearly, uh, Trez could have went to the other side of the court and got a shot seen. Because that's exactly what he did, you know. Um, but he wanted to be known, well, yeah, get the hell off my court. Like, it's my court. You lost, you know, you did bad. Go do that somewhere else. So, um, there may be some type of history between the two, but they have started something now, big time. Uh, the next time these two play, I believe it's next year, March 4th, March 4th. So, it'll be some time between before these two uh, actually meet up again. Um, and this time is going to actually be in Milwaukee. Uh, Milwaukee. So, uh, a tight game, yet... No, you lose by eight, right? Yes. Um, let me see. So I can't actually find the extra free throws. But he missed he missed a hell of a lot of free throws. Let me say that. Um Giannis also one for five from three point land. You're not expecting him to really make three like that. But he, he missed a, a lot of free throws. That could have made an impact in this game to lose by eight. So to want to fix that, understand, I just feel like these two are uh, going at it. Uh, Trez is just that that guy that's just not going to let you just do whatever you want. He wants his pres- presence to be known, whether it's on or off the court. We've seen that from Trez everywhere he plays, ever since he's gotten lead. So um, hopefully this is a motivation thing for Giannis. I believe his brother was trying to talk to Montrez as well. And that went left. Yep. So, uh, to me, it's going to be very interesting to see when these two these two teams meet up again in March. Um, now, if they see each other in the playoffs, now we're talking about a you know a seven game series possibly, where these two do meet up and it'd be something serious. They also met up the first game of the season. Uh, Milwaukee won that game. But Trez hasn't been the person getting a lot of minutes that much. So that could be some of that frustration as well <laughs> because he hasn't really been playing that much. And, hell, when he do play, it ain't like he's doing too much on the court anyway. Nope. So for me, maybe it's just the fact that he wants his presence to be known uh, because he's not getting, you know, that PT that he thought he would uh, in Philly. But to be honest with you, man, we haven't seen the same Trez since he was at the Clippers. He went to the Lakers, and we thought he was going to be this huge uh, addition, and we we barely seen him there. So I'm not sure what is actually going on with Trez with that. Uh, and then, again, you're playing against a Milwaukee team that, hell, Bobby Portis, Serge Ibaka, Ruth Lopez, all of these bigs are going to get a hell of a lot of minutes. And we didn't see that much from Trez that game. Hell, to be honest with you, if I remember correctly, Niang, George Niang had a hell of a game against them. So for me, um, maybe this is just more so of uh, Trez trying to let his presence be known. Um, Because right now, hell, let me see, he has five minutes, a four and a point is what he has. Niang was the one that had the hell of a game. 30 minutes, 17 points. And it ain't like Trez fouled out. He ain't had no foul. So, uh, for me, um, and this is without James Harden playing. So, you would think his minutes would go, you know, he would have a, more, a bigger impact. But right now, he's he's making sure the bench doesn't fly off the, off the court right now. That seems like that's his role. So, maybe it was just more so he's having his presence. But the fact is, you know, I always commend Giannis for 
trying to get better or something, but he has to tighten up with his free throws, man. This, this can't be having this big of an impact. This dude was literally missing the rim. That damn tall? Come on, man. So, uh, but hopefully, if that made Trez feel better, kudos, I guess. Uh, but they'll see each other down the road again. Yeah, I, I think we've, we've seen, like, Giannis, you know, is a real driven individual. If y'all know the backstory about his family and whatnot, he they're a real like, like a driven family. They don't let things slide. They stay together. They're real determined. March fourth is gonna be a real interesting date because that's the next time, like you alluded to, that these two teams play each other on ABC. By by the way, and God, you know the way Montrez was talking to him and stuff like that, and to his brother too. Cause that family's real close, you know, so close that you know, I don't know if you know the stories or not, D Lock, but you know when Giannis got to the league and stuff like that, you know he would take like the food from the catering and stuff at home, like at home canes and stuff like that, and bring and still take them out to his family to come help feed him to help feed him. Still, you know, granted, you know, he was still he was in the league and making you know making his money, he still got that you know. Yeah, I got, yeah, I'm here, but I so got to help my, my people. And I bring that up because, you know, the way Montrez was sitting there talk, you know, talking to his brother like like he did. Yeah, I agree, Marcus. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't think Montrez is like that. You know, I, I, I can't say that for sure, but, you know. You know, I, I just can't. I, I don't know. But we you not know, bring that up, like you know his brother and stuff. How he was talking to him, and you know, I was saying I ain't gonna let that go. And being against Philadelphia, the history that these teams have have had the past couple of years, especially in the playoffs and stuff, you ain't gonna let that go. Giannis may be going for like a damn quadruple a double in that game. And I get you I get your point too. Like I understand you won't work on your free throws. I get that. You know. But damn, if I'm an NBA player, yeah, it's a bad night. It's 82 games in the season. I think you're gonna have those games throughout the year. You know, I my high school coach brought it up back in the day. When he told us like there's about thirty games or so plus playoffs in the uh high school uh basketball season. In the NBA, there's eighty two plus playoffs. I think at time he said and he brought this up, like, there'll be times that you're gonna have bad nights in the NBA. It's 82, 82 games over, you know, a, a stretch of month of games. Uh, to stretch, uh, you know, stretch them in a month stretch, five months or so. High school basketball, depending where you're at, you saw November in, in late February, early March. But your games are more spread out, so you got to be more determined to be more perfect. And you can't stack off at all. NBA, get a benefit of doubt. Yeah, for Giannis, it's just one of those nights. Yeah, you went four for twelve for the free throw line. Yeah, it did not help your team at all. But you know, I know you're determined, but sometimes time and place. You know, time and place. You know. You know, when the practice and whatnot. And then you got, got go back home and play Portland tomorrow, who's probably one of the, some more surprise teams in the NBA. Jeremiah Plant, Grant is playing very well. Dane Little is going to be out for a little bit. But those young guys have really kind of picked up 
the mantle for the uh, Blazers. So yeah, you gotta shake off those that bad free throw night off and get ready for this young Portland team that's gonna come in and try to you know take your cookies. So, you know, I like Marcus a little too. I'm not is, is Montrez a tough guy? I don't know. Marcus don't th- think he is. I really can't say to that. You know, was Trez kind of doing too much in my eyes? Yeah. I think like Trez is trying to like make a point and maybe trying to like stick around longer than a year because he's been bouncing around for the past few years from team to team to team. So we'll see what kind of come around March 4th with these two squads. But I'll let, I'll let you have the last word on this. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing for me. I think, like, he, that's something that they're going to hold on to. So, best believe, like I said, that next meeting, that, that next game between those two is going to be uh, something interesting. And on top of that, now they do meet up in the playoffs for any – they find a way to meet up. This be something that will be brought up, you know. That situation, and knowing the fact that I think Young is pushing the ladder away from the rim, a lot of these things are going to be brought to light, especially they meet up, when they meet up again. And we're talking about two teams that I think that can go pretty far in the East, but the East is 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 the East is pretty deeper than what, what what we projected earlier, man. It, you got some teams up in there that's making some moves. I do want to talk about this one team in the East. I do want to bring this team up. The Chicago Bulls. We want to talk about deep. This team, they lost to the Orlando Magic by one this past Friday night. Bobo, which I brought this up on Twitter, if he stays healthy and whatnot, the 2024 offseason season. He don't get paid. I know this been like a small sample size of what he's been doing, but as we see in professional sports, it don't take much to to show one GM to overpay for you. But they lose by one to the Magic. They're six and ten right now. The Rose have forty one points in that game. Levine had 25 and didn't play in that uh, stretch in the fourth quarter. Billy Donovan sent him out. Which way do you see this Orlando, I mean, not Orlando, a Chicago team going in your eyes? This is a team that we thought, you know, okay, they can make the playoffs, but they're not going to surprise anybody. Which way do you see this Bulls team going? Granted, Lonzo's still out. We don't know when he's gonna come back, but you know they just get Kobe, Kobe White right, Kobe White back, but he only played four minutes. Where do you see this Chicago team going, D Lock, in your eyes? Well, we have seen. I think the thing about this team missing a. Lonzo Ball has been uh, kind of hidden how Alex Caruso has been playing. Um, I use this Omni been, been playing. Sorry if I butchered his name. We That defense has been kind of hidden a little bit that Lonzo brings by having those guys. Uh, so they've been trying to do something. But as I said before, we have some teams playing pretty exceptionally good right now. In the East, I mean, look at the Pacers. Tyrese Halliburton. We still don't know what's going to happen with Miles Turner, but those guys that they have, they're playing pretty good. They're at a nine and six. Mm-hmm. The most surprising team, I think, to a lot of people, is the Washington Wizards. Um, we talked all that crap, but a lot of people are saying a lot of crap about Christoph Porzingis, how he wasn't, it, how what kind of player he is. But if he's healthy, he's you know one of the better players in the league, and he's showing that. Um, they're sitting at 10-7. Uh, so right now, 
You got the Heat. The Heat look like they're trying to get get rolling, but they're kind of in the struggle. Um, the Bulls are just not. This is not the East from a couple of years ago. You know, this these teams are looking hella, you know, looking a lot better. Atlanta Hawks with the pairing of Trey Young and Dejounte Murray look like it's working pretty well for them. Also, guards pairing. We're speaking of guards pairing. Hell, the Cleveland Cavaliers look like they can get in the shootout with anybody and they go down to the wire. So, you got your teams at the top with Boston, who looks like the best team in the East right now with Milwaukee. But, you know, you have the Atlanta, Cleveland. They're in the mix. Mix. Um, so, right now, this Bulls team, it seems like they have to turn things around. Um, they have so many rotational guys. We haven't seen a DeMar DeRozan last year. You know, the one that we've seen that was in the category, in, in the talks of MB, MVP. We haven't really seen that too much of him. Zach Levine looked like he's starting to get back, but he's still having that uh, take a day or two off or take a game or two off. So injury management, shall I say. So for me, I think this team um, is going to get – they're going to turn it around. They need to do it early, early, sooner rather than later. The reason why is because this is not the East, like I said, from a couple of years ago. These teams, that they would easily be better than the Wizards, the Cavs, hell, the Magic, uh, the Knicks. These teams are starting to put some games together early. Now, granted, we're about 16 to 17 games in for most teams, so it's kind of somewhat early. But uh, you can't fall too far behind. Um, haven't seen too much from Booch, and the Andre Drummond has not played that much for me. Uh, for my liking anyway. So I think that this team is going to try. They're going to turn around, but what's going to hurt them is those surprising teams, right, that we have thought weren't going to be as good. They're starting to get kicking early. I mean, we thought that the Pacers were going to be the team, one of the teams tanking. Yep. You know, we didn't think that they were going to be this. We're thinking Buddy Hill and Miles Turner might be on their way to the Lakers, you know, into somewhere, in a trade package. Uh, we were thinking that Porzingis wasn't going to be super duper healthy. Uh, we thought that the Wizards weren't going to be where they are. Hell, we had ideas about the top four teams in Cavs, Hawks, Celtics, and Bucks. We know what the Heat are going to bring. Going to bring. So, uh, for me, they're going to have to turn things around, man, because they're damn near at the bottom. I mean, right now they're a couple games actually ahead of the Pistons, and we see what the Pistons have been doing. So, um, I think they will get things turning. Uh, Lonzo's going to be out, what, a couple more months? Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah, so with him being out, uh, the guy that they got, the guy that they have are going to have to make uh, drastic change and, and, and improvements because right now it's not looking that good. Um, and my thing is, I think we're seeing the Orlando Magic booch, right? Um, he's there for some games and then he disappears. <laughs> And I think that is something that we're seeing a hell of a lot more right now. Um, I'm not sure why, what the case may be. Maybe the fact that they have a little bit of rotation in Andre Drummond. But they have so many people on that team, they need to have somebody to uh, stick to and get them get them going. But right now, they're going to have, you know, tomorrow they got Boston, then they got Milwaukee. Uh, then they have OKC in Utah. So they have a couple of tough games coming up. Um, this stretch is going to get kind of deep. Um, they, they, they're going to have to they're gonna have to turn around quick, which I think they will. I think for me, for Chicago, it's just like, they just, they were just in that weird place, especially when they acquired Zach Levine in their trade with Jimmy Butler years ago. They were in this weird place like, we may have something here, and then we can just add on to it and see where it goes. And then, you know, you can make the switch to, uh, from Fred Hoiberg to uh, Billy Donovan. And that's been a real mixed bag for Chicago. And, you know, has Zach Levine fallen out of favor with Billy, Billy Donovan, that, and that's a legit question <coughs> that, you know, some fans I've seen through Twitter and whatnot, I brought up, like, 
has he fallen out of favor? Zach Levine talking about like Zach Levine with Billy Darvin. That's a legit kind of question because you pay this, you pay this, you decide to pay this dude two hundred million dollars plus to be a cornerstone in your franchise, and which against a team against Orlando Magic with that no no Palo Pantero at all, who's still out with injury. Which I can't wait till he comes back because he was on a roll when he was healthy. But for not for him not to be out there against the Magic and stuff like that is just like, what's going on here? And now you're kind of in the spot. You're six and ten. You know Charlotte. You know they're getting Lamelo. Uh, Lamella ball back, but we talked about them like you know, besides Melo, who else they really got in that squad? Detroit, they're in rebuild mode, so you're not worried about them. Orlando rebuilding as well. You know, I kind of wonder if Paolo was healthy, how how many more wins would they kind of would have eked out? Miami, they've been hit by the injury bug here. A lot this season so far. Bam has missed games. Jimmy Butler has missed games. Reserve guys have missed games like uh, Detman. Tyler Hero has missed some games as well. And then you look at you know the top ten so far. Brooklyn get this getting Kyrie back. New York, I think they kind of figure some things out in the rotation wise and whatnot. Philly. It'd be real to see the next month or so how their record's going to be with Harden and Max going to be out with in, foot injuries. That's a team to kind of keep an eye on if they really take a slide in the standings. And that's a team that Chicago got to keep an eye on, like Philly, for example, and trying to catch them. They're out there, two main guards. If you can't catch them with their two main guards out, you got some, you got some issues right now. Toronto, Washington, I think they're steady for the course. I, I I said in our previous series, if Washington in a top six, six top six team, then what are we doing here? Why are you keeping Bradley Bill around? The Pacers have been a real surprise. I figured they'd be in the tank process for at least a top four pick. And I thought Buddy Hill and Miles Turner would be gone, but it seems like the way they've been playing, they may stick around. Cleveland, once, I think once everybody gets healthy, I think healthy and stays healthy for a little while, I think they'd be more, I think we, they'll stay, they still stay in the top four, but I think they, we talk about one of the better teams in the East. And then the top three, Atlanta, Milwaukee, Boston, I think this, they got to do their thing. And Atlanta is another interesting team too, D-Lock. I know you saw the reports, but the report's saying that, you know, Atlanta's are open to, Trade talks with John Collins again. Mm. Do, I, yeah, that's what I thought. Like, do you foresee that happening if the right deal come along? Because you know you sit at ten and six. You know, you beat Toronto in OT with that great play out of out, out of bounds. That, that was a great play, and they called Toronto sleepwalking there. But, you know, John Collins didn't follow that game. Nine points, 11 rebounds for him. Can you see Atlanta training John Collins if the right deal comes along? To be honest with you, I I kind of do at this point. Um, they've been trying to – he just got an extension, I believe. Yep. So, remember before that, I believe they were having this, well, you know, do we want to bring him back or what do we want to do with him? Um, I think now, knowing what they have depth-wise uh, and how this team is rolling, they might uh, uh, move him. Jalen Johnson is actually playing exceptionally well for them. Frank Kaminsky is in that rotation a little bit more, possibly. Uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich is going to come back. But with Capella and Onyeke Ngangru, hopefully I said that correct, I think that they're good with the bigs. Um, 
they want to see what they can get from John Collins. Because the fact is, worst case, they can bump down DeAndre Hunter to the four. Yeah. You know, but with Jalen Johnson playing how he is, put him in rotation, uh, and I think signing Justin Holiday, that was a big piece. So for me, uh, they want to see what team that have interest in John Collins. Um, and but the biggest thing is, you're gonna have to take that contract. Um, what is he right now? 25. Yeah, he's 25. So uh, he's still I think he's fairly young. You know, player that can make an impact on a team. Uh, but I kind of find it hard for somebody to take that five year, 125 million dollar contract. Yeah. But at this point, I can see them saying, "Well, hey, you know, we get an exceptional deal. Um, it can be possible." But I just don't know where. Uh, he would be going. Like, I don't see what teams out there that has the cap space, you know, and need a power forward or a center. Now, the Lakers clearly need bigs, but I don't see them having that type of money. So, um, I think it's possible, but for the right deal. I don't see them just getting off him just because. Because I think this team is solid with what they have. They just want to put that out there to say, hey, okay, this is a player that can make an impact. What can we get for him? Yeah, I, I, it's hard to move him right now. <clears throat> and that's what kind of drove me nuts about NBA teams before we got there. Air, about restricted free agency. Like, like you, you, you kind of want to keep him, but you don't want him to keep him, but you don't want another team to get him. I don't want my beef with restricted free agency. It's like, if you want the guy, don't you, if you want him, keep him. Don't, don't resign him or don't match the deal. You know, you know. So I was like, "Damn, y'all giving this money, then y'all trying to still offload them." It's like, then you change your mind, yeah. Like I, I get trying to get max value for a guy, but still, like, you know, you you got a hundred million dollars plus in your books. You trade for Deontay Murray. You seem like you got like a bad contract on your books on on uh Boba uh Bovanovic. DeAndre Hunter, you signed him to a big deal as well. You got Trey Young also. Clint Capella is like only the last year of his deal. So it's like, like, pick a struggle. Pick a struggle. As my sister would say, pick a struggle. But, d before we head out, the Brooklyn Nets has, uh, Nets has taken over the lead on uh, the Memphis Grizzlies, 101-93 in the fourth quarter. Uh, ben Simmons leaning uh, lean away with 20 points along with Kevin Durant, 20 points. Kyrie has 12 points, five rebounds, no assists for him. Uh, for Memphis, you know, 26 points for Dylan Brooks, two for eight for three-point land. Seems like Bo- Dylan Brooks is like having those jacking up a, a lot of shots a night and not making an impact. Oh, they didn't find a way to trade him. Anyways, before we have to, off the air, does Brooklyn finish the job against Memphis tonight? I believe so. Um, John Morant, that the offense that they have, I think, um, is hurting them. Um, I don't know, man. Like Memphis can put up some points quick. They have a good rotation of guys. I think it's going to go down to the wire. I mean, we were all talking about eight eight point game. Yeah. The other person has been playing pretty good for them is. Recently, when John Morant doesn't play as David Roddy, oh yeah, um, he's been he's been coming in and getting a, a, a solid amount of minutes and contributing very well recently for them. So uh, Stephen Adams is having one of the bam games. For those, again, I go back to FanDuel and DraftKings. For those that do play those, bigs always eat against Brooklyn. Yep, it doesn't matter who it, it doesn't matter who it is, and we can see that with Stephen Adams seven for eight. Eight boards, assists, and fourteen points, and that's not including the blocks or steals that he has. So, uh, but I think that um, I think it'll go down to the wire. But right now, Kevin Durant is not in the game, and I think when he do, that'll give them that maybe ten to fifteen point lead. Uh, so, but I think they do they do get this dub today, especially with John Durant being out. 
Yeah, I think they close it out as well. And, you know, you know, I think, you know, it was a good game to Kyrie to come back to against a good solid team and just kind of build just build off on it. You know, let the things, you know, the controversy, let things die. I mean, die. I hope it goes away and then just kind of get back on track and trying to just, you know, do your thing, play ball. You know, take your teammates' advice like Kevin Durant. I just want a ball, just ball. You know, so, you know, just ball. Keep your head down. You know, do what you got. I mean, do what you got to do. Just keep things basketball related. Talk to the press. And, you know, social media, everybody's watching you. Even if you're not famous, everybody watching you. So, just keep that in mind and whatnot. But this has been our show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in with us. Thank y'all for listening. Thank shout out to Adam Karnick in the chat. Which I surprised Chicago didn't get hit with that snowstorm. Shout out to Marcus Los Great in the chat. Shout out to the founder, Larry B in the chat. Shout out to Mike Pat in the chat. He'll be right behind us here in a little bit. And shout out to Terry Rodriguez in the chat. Great job on the uh playoff stuff and uh the playoff high school playoffs in California, Terry. Great job on that. As you're doing great work uh, for IE Sports Radio. But D Lock, how can people find you on social media? You guys find me at Black Dash 813 on Twitter and Instagram. Let me know where to find you at, man. Uh, find the show on Twitter at Fast Break at IESR. That's Fast Break IESR. Also, do check out IESportsRadio.com. The holidays are, are just around the corner. Hit the um, gift shop. We got T-shirts, ornaments, you know, banners. Hit the gift store. Get a gift for your significant other, family member, and take tell them about Ice Sports Radio. We do great things here in the network. I do have a uh, Twitter account, Spawn4288. I do have a show on the side called The Crooks Process. You can find that on Facebook and Instagram. And on TikTok also, I do some videos on there. I post a lot of stuff on those uh, pages, so do follow me on there. And I keep you all day when I do a, a podcast episode, which I ain't done in a while. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, we'll talk to you all uh, next week for more basketball news and scores around the world. But until then, peace. <laughs>